Hi, my name is Kirk Hamilton, and this is the Staying Healthy Today show, and I'm here again in Okinawa, Japan, and I'm here with Dr. Craig Wilcox, and it's a pleasure. I'm in his office at the Okinawa International University, and we're going to have a discussion about heart disease and some of the superfoods in the Okinawan diet, and we're also going to talk about your genes and heart disease and the Okinawan diet. So thanks for being on the show today. Thank you for having me, Kirk. So here we go. We got, uh, in fact... The reason I brought it up is I think we, we can start off with natto. You can actually buy natto. Now, I've only heard about natto as being this terrible tasting thing that <laughs> makes you pucker and it supposedly has some vitamin K2 in it, but I'm going to let Dr. Wilcox talk about, at least start from here, natto and heart disease. Well, uh, natto being a soy-based, uh, fermented soy-based product, um, carries with it the health properties, mm -hmm. beneficial health properties for cardiovascular disease of, of uh, other soy products. So there's been evidence that allowed for an FDA claim uh, regards to reduced risk for a cardiovascular disease so due to lipids, lipids, uh, lower cholesterol, mm -hmm. uh, lower trigly triglycerides, it's, it's protein, got lots of nice vegetable proteins in there. Mm -hmm. and, uh, some there's actually some enzymes from natto that have been shown to be uh, plaque fighters in, in, in terms of, of cognitive health. So it's it's quite an interesting um, and I think very healthy food. You, you're getting uh, the fermentation process helps uh, bring out these enzymes that that are uh, that are. Um, good for, for cognitive health. Mm -hmm. So that's for the natto. So you, you get all the properties of you know, an increase in, in some B vitamins and so all, all the pro healthy properties of fermenting a food. Now this is what I get for my kids. It's a little package, you know. You just break it off like See, that. Kids actually do eat these foods. Yes, and you can open it up. And you buy this at a regular grocery store? Yep. Bought it today. I'm gonna bring all right, it I have to take, can you open one up because I've heard it tastes terrible so I will Oh, you're going to be brave enough to do it? Okay. All right. My brain won't shrink. and We'll see. <laughs> All right. Then you see it's like this, and you can take off that little oh, piece boy. like that. This doesn't look and good. you can see. <laughs> this doesn't look good. Very. Oh, but don't forget. Got to put a little bit of flavoring in there. Now Is it vinegar? Or what is it? There's yes, it's a vinegar-like you know, flavoring. So I'm really scared to do this, and I'll eat anything. <gasps> <laughs> now you should be feeling sharper, cognitively sharper, any second now. My blood cholesterol is dropping. I can feel. It. <laughs> well, actually, that doesn't taste bad not, at all. Not too bad. Mm -mm. Yeah, you think the taste is a little too strong? You can mix it in with <coughs> miso soup. Yeah, is, I can see that mellowing a little bit. Yes. All right, so we got that down. How about the controversy of omega-3 fats? So where do the Okinawans get their omega-3 fats? Do they just eat fish or do they put, well, I guess they, I don't see an elderly elder taking a fish oil capsules, but so where do they get their <laughs> omega-3 fats? One, being fish, mm -hmm. um, the Okinawan elders grew up on, Farms are in fishing communities, so they were farmers or fisher folk. So mm -hmm. um, those who were farmers got the fish from the fishermen, and, mm -hmm. and uh, the fishermen got their vegetables from the farmers. So would they eat fish every single day? Um, in small amounts, mm -hmm. um, it was often consumed. Um, and the other main source is uh, through seaweeds, or what I call sea veggies. You know, mm -hmm. The so, omega-3s in, sea in seaweed? Yes. Well, that they eat. Daily is or that's a daily consumed food. Right. Seaweed yes. is daily. Yes. So, so, plant sources as well as um, uh, fish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then, let's get to the oils that the Okinawan use in their cooking. In the olden days, I thought there was very little oil. They used pork fat, right? Way, way back in the day when they were very poor and very. Right. So we've gone from there. And, and it's not a lot of pork fat, was it? I mean, or no, I mean, the, 
Um, God, so my fingers are sticky now. <laughs> you, caught, you caught me. The uh, first of all, you have to, the type of fat. I mean, when you when you have uh, uh, pigs that are raised outside and eating sweet potatoes, uh -huh. well, they're <laughs> healthy sweet potatoes and these sweet potato greens, mm -hmm. and they're free range. It, it's a healthier type Oil. of of of, of, fat. of of fat than you, you think. Part fat. Oh my God, but. Uh, you'd have to think about how animals were raised and what they were fed in the old days, and, and it's uh, you have a higher amount of uh, monounsaturated and polyunsaturated omega-3 fatty acids, even. You know, so okay. every animal fat is a is a mixture of, of fats. You know, it's not just saturated fat in animal fat. So, so but so the, the whole percentage of fat in the in the, in the, in the total original. diet in the traditional diet was less than ten percent. Right, so that's a low-fat diet. So that's more okay. So that would be in the the line of the Esselton and McDougals and Barnard diets um, of today. Right now, let's fast forward. That was in the forties or so. Yeah. Or? Um, yes, in the in the uh, first half of the twentieth century, century, basically. Okay. So if we fast forward, not to the the terrible West uh, you know, Okinawan diet, meaning the fast food diet, but I'm talking about the elders now. Are they they do they pour, use oil in their stir frying and what kind of oils do they use? Yeah, the consumption of edible oils has has really um, uh, gone up in the in the past few decades. Mm -hmm. So in the immediate post war period in the nineteen fifties to the nineteen sixties, um, you still saw the 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 Okinawan sweet potato as the as the major uh, source of calories. And that was mostly steamed. Right. So another way of cooking them was kind of stir fry, and you do use oil. So once oil became widely available in the late, you know, in the in the mid '60s, '70s, the the consumption of oil uh, of of um, well uh, fat in the diet went from you know less than 10 percent to to about 30 percent. Not about 28 percent now. If you look at the, the modern right. Okinawan. So diet. that's the all right. So I'm trying to separate. But the, if that was mm. a healthy elder consuming that amount now, or is that help elders? They're about twenty six percent right, in so terms that's a, of that's a fattier fat, diet. So fat where do they get the fat from then? Uh, of... Mostly um, edible oils, cooking oils mm -hmm. such as uh, canola oil mm -hmm. and uh, soy. They call it salad oil, salada yu in Japanese. Right. It's it's a mixture of, of soy and canola oils. Uh -huh. That's widely available, and so, so that's. Those but, but people consume these days all kinds of oils, right? Olive oil, you know, here in Okinawa too, that people like olive oil. So, <laughs> but um, you know, so the elders went through this this period of where they consumed very little oil, you know, most of their lives to to later ages where oil became more widely available, and now right. they can. can uh, all right. So, what are their, their cardio protective? Agents, um, we didn't get the last mm. discussion. Turmeric came up. Is turmeric cardiovascular protective or that more just inflammatory neuroprotective? Um, it's more well known for its neuroprotective uh, properties uh, for cognitive health, mm -hmm. but it's actually, um, it's also, it stimulates one of our longevity genes called uh, FOXO. So, FOXO um, is a gene in the insulin signaling. Pathway and it's very much involved with uh, oxidative stress and inflammation, and, you know, so it's it's tapped to to lower oxidative stress and and inflammation through downstream mm -hmm. gene targets and turmeric or curcumin, the active ingredient, will upregulate this function of this gene. So, actually, yes, to make a how about that? <laughs> well, <laughs> speaking short story of long. segues. <laughs> Uh -huh. Let's talk about the FOXO gene since we're talking about the heart. Mm -hmm. And you did a study and mm -hmm. you came up with some results. Now, my bias is I don't want everybody to believe in genes because then they mm -hmm. don't do anything with their lifestyle. Right. So I'm going to await your results <laughs> with trepidation. <laughs> so tell us what you found out. Well, interestingly, what we found is that um, there's different versions of uh, FOXO. We looked at, there's four FOXOs in the human uh, in human beings, and one of them is FOXO3, and we found that FOXO3, if you had the protective version of that particular gene, um, you had 
you can have one, you can have zero, one, or two copies of the projective version. And if you, it, it's one allele called a G. So if you had one G, uh, you had double the chance of reaching the age of 100. If you have two copies of that gene, of the protective version, two Gs, then you would uh, have three times the chance of it reaching the age of 100. And we said, okay, well, great. You, if you have the protective version of the gene, you've got a higher chance of living longer. So we said, okay, if you're living longer, you're not dying from something. What are you not dying from? Is it cancer? Is it stroke? Is it cardiovascular disease? What we found was that you, you, the, the, the main bang for your buck is coming from reduced risk for coronary artery disease, the number one killer in, in America. Right. So, so you found out a pattern mm -hmm. that, you know, if you, if you had the genes and you did diet, you got one result. If you had a, good, a bad diet and you had the genes, you got another result. If you had a good diet and good genes, you had another result. You want to... Yeah, we, we, we looked at, well, we thought, well, this is an interesting um, question. And we're always talking about the strength of genes versus lifestyle. So we said, well, which is better? Which is more powerful? So you have the protective version of the gene. You're at lower risk for coronary artery disease. Okay. Well, what if you have a good diet and you have a, the protective version of the gene? Well, those people live the longest. Then, the, then uh, we said, well, okay, say you have the... The, a poor diet, but you got that protective version of the gene. Do they live longer than somebody who has a, a very good diet but lacks the protective version? What we found out was, okay, in this case, lifestyle trumps genes because those who had a very good diet lived longer hey, than those who had a poor diet but had the protective gene. You know? So we found that the, those who had the good lifestyle, the good diet, did better despite the fact that they lacked the protective Were these Okinawans or was this in, within the Okinawan population or just in general the, when you did the study? I this was within um, our Japanese cohort population, so Okinawans and other Japanese. Uh -huh. Yeah. Right. So it's good to have the protective version of the gene, no doubt. It will reduce your, your risk for dying from coronary artery disease. But uh, a good diet is, is more important. With a good diet, you can actually activate that gene. Right. So even if you don't have the protective version of the gene, if you have the protective pro, sorry protective version, it's activated almost all the time. Right. But if you if you lack the protective version, you can still activate that gene by through your diet. That's, that's so key. That's so key. That reminds me of the Ornish work and how he on his plant based diet, people um, for prostate cancer, it activated some five hundred genes, one way or another, up regulated, down regulated. Right, and that's what the fox. So it's it's a superintendent gene. It controls all these downstream target genes. So it's telling all these other genes, important genes, uh, for coronary artery disease, what to do. So if you activate FOXO, you're act activating also all these other genes, and you can do that with um, FOXO activators. So like curcumin is a very strong FOXO activator. Soy, so uh, tofu, um, uh, sweet potatoes. And those are all good for heart disease then. Um, right. So what you have with the traditional Okinawan diet and why you have such low levels of, of uh, heart disease in Okinawa is not only do you have this healthy diet with a low amount of calories but high amount of nutrients, you, you have all these FOXO activators. So mm -hmm. they're, they're like calorie restriction mimetics. We know that calorie restriction, you know, you, you live longer. But uh, with, with the Okinawa diet, what you have is the powerful effects of caloric restriction, but without the restriction, because right. you're getting these, these... Now people are paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> now people you know, are you're paying. actually eating more on the traditional Okinawan diet in mm -hmm. terms of grams of food per day, and you're getting tons of phytonutrients, all these phytonutrients, but a low amount of calories. Why? Because the, the, the diet is calorie poor, but nutrient, nutrient dense. dense. And that's the ideal combination for, for healthy aging and, in particular, reducing your risk for cardiovascular disease. We're talking to Dr. Craig Wilcox. This has been about the, I don't want to say superfoods, but the really good foods in the Okinawan diet. And one of the reasons, uh, the many reasons they have lower incidence of heart disease. If you'd like, go to stayinghealthytoday.com. You can listen to this podcast, watch this interview. And I'll talk to you soon. You have a fabulous day.